All right, welcome to today's teaching. And today we're going to be looking at a topic which is very crucial to our faith as Christians and to our life and future as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. The topic we're going to be looking at today is born again. What does it mean to be born again? Okay, very quickly, we're going to be sharing a scripture, and that is in the book of John, chapter 3, uh, from verse 1 to 5. John, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. Now, from verse 1, now uh, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who, come, who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you're doing uh, if God were not with them. Uh, okay, he knew why he was saying that, but Jesus replied and said, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And as Christians, I believe you want to take this issue of being born again you, uh, as an uh, utmost part of your Christian journey, you know, utmost doctrine. Okay, verse 4, Nicodemus was confused, as somebody else might be confused too. He said, what does it mean to be born again? He said, how can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born? Uh, Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, listen to that. The man was confused and he asked, what does it mean to be born again? How can I be born again? But Jesus didn't even bother to explain what it means to be born again. He just told him frankly, he said, uh, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. I say you cannot see. Now, you cannot enter the kingdom of God if you are not born again. Do you understand what that means, even as Christians today? Do you understand that without being born again, that's, well then, it's easy to say, oh, say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I will continue to obey you, continue to obey you, that's the point. You said you're going to continue to obey Christ when you give your life to him, but look at everything you've done between the time you've given your life to Christ and this day, are you, I mean, which way you can judge by by the things you do, by your passions, by your goals, whether you have really surrendered your life to Christ. So back to what it means to be born again. I would say to be born again simply means you used to be a kind of person before, but you are no longer that kind of person. You used to do some things in the past and in the past, for example, uh, like some people tell lies, you know, some people kill, murder. Some people say uh, lies, and if I tell lies and I come back and say, I'm just joking. Uh, well, the Bible affirms it in the book of Proverbs or in a particular passage that if you're telling lies and you come back to your neighbor and say, I'm just joking, I'm just playing with you. The Bible says you are, you are like a, a man, a madman that plays with fire. So definitely, a April Fool is out of it for a Christian. How many Christians are how many Christians are out there doing it? That is obviously not spiritually okay. It's not spiritually okay. So let's take note of that. Then back to the topic of discussion. You said telling lies. Okay, let's check. Even liars, you know, the Bible says some people in the last day they they're going to uh, you know if their names are not found in the book of life something is going to happen to them. So let's see what that part of the scripture says in the book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. So let's share that scripture now. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse uh, 15. Yeah, it says, anyone, yeah, it could be anybody, a pastor, a worker, a whatever, anyone, a church member, anyone, a founder, anyone, a general overseer, anyone, whose name was not found written in the book of life, uh, was thrown into the lake of fire. I believe as Christians, we do not want to end our journey there. No, we don't want to. So that is the essence of bringing this teaching to us so that we can adjust. We can truly be born again. We can truly leave some things behind us and uh, we can truly follow the newness of 
Christ. You know, what does 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 it says? It says, if you are in Christ, you're a new creature. Your old life, your old thoughts, your old practices are, uh, you know, they are gone for good. And there is a uh, particular scripture also that talks about, you know, that line of a thing. Let's check Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. You look at it here. He says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderous, the sexual, immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars. That's where we're going. So whether white lies or lies, whether blue lies or lies, whether green lies or in lies, it doesn't matter the kind of lie you're telling, all lies. Now, let's think about it. Is it impossible? Lives, what will it cost me or what will it cost you to stop telling lies? Just think about it and take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, just consider it. Uh, do, do I tell lies just to save myself or do you want to tell lies just to save yourself from the face of anything you might consider as the utmost, you know, before you today? But in the end, you lose your soul. I, I hope you don't want to do this. So, so definitely, we should all stop telling lies. Whether we're joking, whether we're serious, we want to save it today, or you can't even save anything by telling lies. That is the truth of the matter. So, now, very quickly, as I round up, what does it mean to be born again? Follow me to the book of Colossians, chapter 3. Yeah, Colossians 3. Um, we have a lot of verses to look at there, but I pray there will be time for us to come back online if I receive your feedbacks and, you know, to do more teachings like this. Now, uh, at least you will know that there are, you know, uh, souls that are actually hungry and they want to hear from the Word of God, not from any man, but from the Word of God, so we can enlighten ourselves on how to actually develop spiritually. Verse three, uh, chapter 3 verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. That's the point. Whoever has not been dead to sin can never be raised with Christ. Whoever has not been dead to worldly lifestyle, fashion, trending, you know, anything, popularity, uh, pleasure, if you have not been dead to flesh, you can never. So it says, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your eyes on things above. Now the question is, what are the things above? Think about it. Mention one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that are above. That is the story for another day. We can come online again to do this teaching. So set your eyes on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Now, verse 2, set your minds on things above. He's telling us again, you know, when you are repeating something, that means that is a very crucial matter. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Just take a look at that, not on earthly things. Now, let me put it up to you. What are earthly things? What are earthly things that the Bible said do not set your minds upon? What are they? Anyway, we can come back online and give yourself some uh, sort, you know, tips on those things that actually the Bible wants us or that God wants us to stay away from. You know, earthly things. Now, the Spirit says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You know, one that the scripture say, He that dwell in the secret place of the most, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you can see the replication here. Verse 4 When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. You also will appear. So that means you do not seek your own glory now. You do not do things for people to praise you and clap for you. No. Whatever you do, do unto the glory of God. That is what it means to be born again. Now, part of what it means to be born again, starting from verse 5, it says, Put to death. Put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, put them to death. 
Now, what are those things you have to actually kill? You know, what are those things you have to kill? What are the things you have to put to death? Immorality. That's number one. Sexual immorality. We live in a world that immorality is the order of the days. When you look at celebrities celebrating their bad days, what do they put on place? Do they cover the shame of their nakedness? Are they shameful or shameless? This is a shameless generation with all, for all I care. You know, the more naked you are, the more sexy they call you. So when they call you sexy, they are actually calling you an instrument of immorality. You know, sexual immorality. It has to do with the things you think within your mind. It has to do with the things you do with your body. It has to do with the way you present. Look at what Jesus said. He said, if a man looks at a maiden with an immoral thought, you know, he has already committed the sin. Now, when you dress up and you look at yourself in the, the presence of a mirror, you know, in the, uh, the front of a mirror, what do you see? Do you see the glory of God or you see your shame being revealed? You know, uh, sexual immorality. If you appear in a way to, to, to arouse sexual impurity or immorality from an opposite sex, then definitely you have, sus you have successfully made a, a, a God to become the enemy of those that he has come to save. So wh when you dress up next time, just ask yourself, am I an instrument of holiness or an instrument of immorality then the next one is impurity we cannot we don't have time to go through all of these but we're just going to rush through if there is time later if you so desire that we continue this teaching we're going to continue impurity what are the things that makes your mind that makes our minds impure our evil thoughts you know the desires of our heart the thoughts of our heart the music we're listening to if you listen to godly songs they're going to incline your mind towards God. But worldly songs that we we'll listen to up and down cannot draw us closer to God. What does the scripture say? It says you communicate with what one another with spiritual songs, with hymns. So even if you're not going to sing hymns, there are a couple of new songs out there. There are a couple of godly songs, spiritual songs that are going to, you know, coordinate your mind to God. So listen to them, not because it is popular or raining, but because it is good for your soul. That is what you should listen to. Now, he says, lost. What does lost? You know, we're going to talk about that later. That's, a, that's an entire topic on song. Lost. Evil desires. Some people desire evil. You know, just to do, I don't know. Why will a human being kill another human being over this vanity world? Why? I can't just explain it. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. And greed. Greed. Wanting more. Wanting more. In your ambition. You know, some people don't care whether people cry just to fulfill their own ambition. They are going to fulfill it at all costs. They dupe a lot of people and a lot of people cry. Ah, they don't care. You know, greed. And I said this greed is idolatry. So if you're greedy, and where do, what do you see in most prayers we lead in our churches today? They, 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 they teach us or lead us to pray our life into greed. And what does the Bible actually say about all this accumulation of things? It says you should be content with food and clothing. It said those that want to become rich at all costs, those that want to become rich, they pierce themselves with lots of, you know, arrows of sorrows. They pierce themselves with sorrows. So do you, are you also piercing yourself with sorrow today? Just think about it. We can come back online to do justice to that topic. Now, the sixth, because of this, the wrath of God is coming. Take note of that. Because of all these things we mentioned, if we still indulge in them and still claim we're Christians, my friend, we are far from being Christians. So the wrath of God is coming, he says, you should walk in these ways. I mean, you used to walk in these ways, the ways we mentioned, in the life you once lived. In the life you once lived. But now, you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. That is, these are other points. Hunger, 
some people say, oh, the, the word of God says we should be hungry, oh, but we should not allow the sun to set. It means you are jobless, please. You are simply jobless if you want to be angry and be watching on the sun. I mean, uh, the, 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 what the scripture is actually telling you there is never to be angry. Look at when they asked Jesus, how many times uh, does my brother have to offend me uh, that I have to forgive and I will not forgive again after that? Jesus says 70 times, 7 times, please. Jesus is simply telling them, if you are that jobless that you want to be keeping record of other people's offenses, then be counting 70 times, 7 times a day. So if you count 70 times 6, remain a 70 times in a day, then the day is over you start counting again the following day. Does that make sense? I mean, what he's trying to tell us is this. Before somebody offends you, prepare forgiveness. Before somebody offends you, do what? Prepare forgiveness. So when you prepare forgiveness, it will be easy with the help of God to let go of offenses. So let's take note of that. He said, you used to walk in this ways in life you must live, but you must rid yourself of these things. Anger, rage. You know, when you see some so-called Christians raging, you don't know who I am, you don't know what I have, you don't know what I can do. You know, I tell you, you can do nothing. <laughs> you are nothing because you're just lost for goodness sake. One day, you're going to lie down without a life in you. So when there's no life in you, I wonder who you are. And I wonder, so no matter who you are today, you are the president, you are the street sweeper, you're going to end up in the grave one day, in the grave one day. So think about that. When you're raging, I don't know, you don't know who I am, you don't know what I can do, you don't know, you know, it doesn't make sense. It shows our level of foolishness when we rage. Then the next thing, malice. A lot of people can keep malice, you know. Uh, we claim to be Christians, we're praying to God. What does the word of God say? He said, forgive others their sins, forgive us our sins as we forgive others their sins. So I don't know who asks you to go and confess to a man to receive forgiveness when you are the only somebody in the prisons of your heart. It doesn't make spiritual sense. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make spiritual sense. Then the next one is slander. So people can use their mouth to slander people bring them to the grave while alive. That is not fair. It's not fair. And it's not spiritually fair too. And feel the language from your lips. This is where comedy comes in. Feel the language. Do you know the scripture says in one part of the uh, gospel, it says, you will give account. I will give account of every word that proceeds out of my mouth. Now, think about that. How many words have you spoken today? How many words have I spoken today? Yeah, it's the grace of God that can keep us from all these things. But we should not continue in sin and say the grace of God should abound. These scriptures say, God forbid. So, feel your language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with these practices, and that's the meaning of being born again. Old self. Put it off like you remove a cloth and put on, you know, you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of his creature. So it means when you put on that new man, that you are now a new person. And that's why I laugh when I hear Christians saying uh, individual differences, uh, cultural differences, please, 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 please. They call them Christians in the, those times, you know, when they were following Christ, because they all behave like Christ. They behave like Christ. Mr. H behave like Christ. Brother B behave like Christ. Brother C behave like Christ. All of them behave like Christ. And all of them now have the same character and nature, which is the character and nature of Christ. So if we still behave differently today, then it means we are far from being born again. It means we are far from being born again. So put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, you know, the new self, which is being renewed. After putting it on, it must be renewed, be washed, be renewed, be washed, be cleansed, be renewed, be washed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Verse 11, here, there is no gentile, there is no Jew, 
There is no circumcised, there is no uncircumcised. There is no barbarian, there is no Scythian. There is no slave, there is no free. Because we are all one, but in Christ, or in Christ, but Christ is all and is in all. So that means your life is Christ, my life is Christ. Christ is in you, Christ is in me. Then we have the same nature of Christ. Show me a church where yeah, this is obtainable. But I tell you, it is possible if we all can be ready to submit our life to Christ. It goes beyond the prayer of confession. No, 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 no. That's not what everyone is talking about. Everyone is actually talking about you coming out of the old way and going into the new life with Christ. Okay, verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, yeah, you've been chosen, <laughs> holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself. Now, he didn't say clothe yourself with little designer this time around. He didn't say clothe yourself with, you know, whatever you might be thinking about. But clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness and patience. Clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness towards others, with humility, you know, humility, with gentleness and uh, patience. Mr. Tim, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. But if you cannot do that, how could you possibly be aiming to, uh, you know, go to heaven? How could you possibly? The Bible says, no impure thing will enter heaven. And grudge that you have against one another is a sign of, is a form of impurity. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love. If you love somebody, if you love your neighbor, you're going to show them the way to eternal life. If you truly love them, you love your family members, you're going to share the word of God with them. You're going to show them the hidden secret. You're going to show them the treasures of heaven. You're going to show them. So all this virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. It's not about just claiming, I love you, I love you, I love you. No, uh, the world is, the, we're quick to proclaim love. We're quick to profess love today. But do we actually love? Okay, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now listen, how can I be peaceful when I don't have food to eat? How can I be peaceful when I'm in debt? How can I be peaceful when I'm in sickness? How can I be peaceful when things, when the world is crumbling under my feet? How can I be peaceful? What do you say? Let the peace of Christ move in your heart. I remember the story about when Christ was in the boat with his disciples. The storm was raging, but the Savior was fast asleep. They were troubled, just like you are troubled now. <laughs> I pray to somebody to save the peace of Christ in Jesus' name. The Bible said, the peace that supersedes all understanding Christ has given to you. He said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. No wonder the scripture say, uh, no wonder the scripture say, blessed are the peacemakers for, uh, for they, they, they shall be called children of God. If you're a Christian and you're the one causing trouble between a person and another person, between husband and wife, between you're just scattering everywhere, then you're not a Christian. Admit it that you're not yet a Christian. You're just going to church, it's just a Sunday, you know, Sunday follower and Christ follower. So, and be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Let that thing come from your heart. Be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. 
not sung from the superstar. <laughs> you want a song from the superstar, from the you know latest trending super musician. But Jesus is not doesn't want you to go that way. He said, he said, uh, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. Message of Christ, not message of, uh, you know, all the popular messages we hear up and down. No, but the message of Christ. So what is now the message of Christ? We're going to come, that, come back with that some other time, yeah, if Christ permit. So, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, through hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Okay. We have heard the word of God. You have heard the word of God. It is not about the preacher this time around. It is not about the word itself this time around. But it's about you and what you do with it. God bless you. See you again some other time. If I Thank you very much.